Hi, this is Christian Crank with Trainers, and today we're going to be doing a demo called Fishing with Interpreter and EdgerCap. Uh, in this lab, we're going to conduct a phishing attack using an interpreter, reverse TCP shell as a payload, and EdgerCap. This lab is written using a Windows XP Service Pack 3 as a target computer and a Kali Linux box as the attacking computer. So it would be wise to use the same systems at home. So first things first, we need to start an Apache 2 web server. To do this, fire up a terminal and type in forward slash Etsy init.d Apache 2 start. So if it's already running, it'll say it's already running. If it's not, it'll run it. So now that it's started, we need to have an executable payload. So I already have uh, NSF console here loaded up. I'm going to use the, the option show payloads. And this is going to show every payload it has. So I am looking for Meterpreter reverse TCP. So this is the this is the payload I'm going to be using. So keep this open. And we're going to back to the other terminal. Or Better yet, start a new terminal. We're going to use MSF payload. We're going to put the payload in. We're going to set our listening host to our IP, which is the attacking box's IP address. We're going to set the L port to 1337, which is the listening port. We're going to make it an executable, and we're going to output it to payload.exe. So keep in mind that the IP address you will enter is going to be whatever your attacking box is going to be, and the port can be whatever you'd like. So once the exe is done, we're going to move the exe, so move payload, to var www. It's going to be moved over there to the Apache's root directory. So you can close that, and you're going to head back to your MSF console terminal. Here you're going to set up a multi-handler, which is a generic payload handler. Your payload and your options. To do this, type in use exploit multi-handler, and hit enter. After that, you want to set your payload. So you're going to do a set payload and you're going to set the exact same payload that we did. So it's Windows, Interpreter, Reverse, TCP. And you're going to set your L host to your IP address, your attacking IP address. And you're going to set your L port to the exact same port we set the payload to. So once that's all set up, then all you got to do is type an exploit. That'll start the handler, start listening, and now it's just going to wait for the connection from the target box when they download the payload.exe and run it. So now that we have no split listening and the payload's made, it's moved to the server. We need to create and compile an error cap filter. For this lab, I'm using a shack dancing like animated GIF to make the attack less believable. In real standards, you'd want to put a logo to make it more believable, a QuickTime logo, ActiveX logo, Flash logo, etc. Um, it's completely optional, but it's recommended to put an image that people would want to click, like, oh, hey, yeah, that's Flash telling me I need to download new plugins. So you can either snag an image from the internet or make one yourself, and the image can be whatever you like. So for the iframe filter, the editor cap filter, I already have it pre-made. You're going to be doing a if IP protocol equals TCP and TCP destination equals port 80, and if search data dot data equals or and accept coding, then replace accept coding with accept anything. And the other half of it is if IP protocol equals TCP and TCP source equals port 80, and if search data data title, replace entitle with entitle start form action 
HTTP, your IP, your payload name. The method is going to be a link and the image source is going to be the image you have in your Apache directory. The input type is going to be a submit value, so it's just going to be button. And I'm going to put download latest plugins. And then you can have extra text and this is you are unable to view some of the web pages contents. You need to download the latest plugins to fix this issue. And then it's a message to HTML injected. So we're going to save this as iframe filter. And now that's that saved, it should be there. Now once we have the filter set up, we're going to be using the editor filter command. Now we're going to put the iframe filter or you're going to output it to iframe.ef. And that should make an editor cap filter that we can use with no problem. So script's encoded. After it's compiled, we're going to go ahead and run it with the editor cap command. So it's editor cap T lowercase Q capital F iframe.ef. That's our script for editor cap. And then we're going to set it to art poisoning. You're going to put your target IP, which mine is 178. Let's that. So 178. And then our group 2 is going to be any, any. So that's going to start sniffing. So once it's once editor cap is now art poisoning, you can move on over to your target machine and navigate to any web page. When I say any web page, I mean any web page. So if you do this, if somebody's just opening the browser, it's going to pop. Like home page and everything, even on Google, it's going to pop. And you're going to see the iframe up above. So I'm going to open up my Internet Explorer. And it's the first one, I have my chat gif. There it is, dancing. And it's going to tell me you are unable to view some of the web page's contents. You need to download the latest plugin. Now, the reason this happens is because HTML is being injected through the art poisoning. So, like I said, any web page you go to, it's going to pop up there. Google. Except for an HTTPS page. Protected sites, so Facebook. Bank websites. It wants to load. Will not have it up there, but anything that's unprotected, like anything HTTP, goes back to Google, it'll have the injection. So, so say that was like an ActiveX or QuickTime logo or something. So I'm just like, oh, you know, your usual person's going, oh, I need to download my latest plugin. This isn't going to be called payload. It's going to be called like plugins.exe. So it's going to be, they're going to save it, they're going to open it automatically, they're going to run it because they want to get these plugins done. And the moment you see on your box that a session's been open, you stop editor cap. So they're like, okay, well, I guess it's a silent installer. They'll pop over Google, they'll be like, oh, cool. You know, it's done. I got all the latest plugins, but in all honesty, You have exploited their box. So there you have it. If you did everything correctly, you have successfully tricked the user into downloading, executing a malicious payload, giving you a interpreter session. From here, you will want to work on some post exploitation techniques. You can type help into the interpreter window to show a list of commands and their functions. Thank you.